Hello folks, this is Ron Cross. I want to kind of go over a few things with you. I'm putting together a notebook that I want to make available to people. You know who I am. I was an investigator in Oklahoma City bombing with Charles Key. I was his legal researcher. I was also one of the investigators. I also worked on the movie that came out about the Oklahoma City bombing, The Noble Lie. I was, in, I was the uh, assistant director. You can see that there for the filming for part of that. What I want to talk to you today about is a notebook that I'm going to put together for folks and I'm going to show you a lot of documents today and this is what's going to be inside that notebook and you're going to be able to use this notebook uh, and, and show your neighbors and your friends exactly what's going on. I want to show you things that uh, have been going on for a number of years that most people don't know or if they do know they've never seen any real proof of it. So here it is. Um, here's an article I pulled out of the Daily Oklahoman and you can see it talks about the UN and uh, gun control. Back in about 1963, you can see the same thing came out, very close. And in fact, in this particular document, it does do a couple of things. It does name State Department Document 7277, which will be included in the book that I'm putting together for folks. And it also shows something here that most people aren't aware of, where it talks about a surrender of our sovereignty. Um, that is listed again um, in one of the documents that I have. So you can see it right there and about the middle it says a uh, surrender of sovereignty of the United States. What I want to do is show you the documents that I'm going to have available for you within this book. Um, you can see they come right out of the law. This one in particular is constitutional law and it basically talks a little bit about the United States and our sovereignty with treaties and different things, so that's going to be in, in the book. I'm also going to have things that a lot of people are unaware of that tell you just flat out that treaty with a foreign power uh, was considered uh, supreme law of the land, so this is how they're going to push this stuff down our throat, so it's nothing new. Another one that I want folks to see, and I've pointed this out for a very long time, is the right to keep and bear our arms for lawful purpose was not granted by the Constitution, the Second Amendment. Basically, it goes on even further to say that, you know, being infringed means no more than it's going to be infringed by Congress or could be. Well, we can see that that's not what's happening. Another document I'm going to have available, this is off the UN's website. Um, you can basically see that uh, they are concerned with uh, small arms. And basically, they're making it, they're breaking it down to the international community. So uh, there's a lot of good information that I'm going to have out here that you can share with your friends and neighbors. What we're talking about here is a potential new world order. So here's the first time that I have been able to find it within, let's say, an actual government document. You can see right there, an appendix to the congressional record. So these are documents that folks can look up for their themselves. This was a document that came out. Um, it was dated March 28th of 1994. You can see the folks that signed on to it. That was here in Oklahoma. And I'll back up a little bit and let you see the whole document. But let's zoom in on part of it. We can see that uh, there's no popular support for the establishment of a new world order or world sovereignty right there. Now this is an Oklahoma uh, document that come out of the, the, uh, the uh, house. So it is the real deal. It isn't made up. So when people say there is no proof for a new world order, uh, no, it's actually been used inside government documents. There's two examples. We're going to look at the revision for the United Nations Charter on Friday. You can see the legislative date there, February 17th, 1950. You can see that uh, Mr. Smith, I believe it was, um, was opposed to basically the UN <clears throat> because I believe he realized it would be a surrender of our sovereignty. And on page 441 of that document, you can see it in black and white. So what the heck is really going on? Well, 
I guess they're surrendering our sovereignty is what it amounts to. These are all documents I'm going to make available to people. This is 87297 Public Law. This is where it all began. A year later, what we have is 88186 in public law. And what's interesting is that you can see some of the words that they use down there. They do talk about the individual use of firearms and things. This is freedom from war. As you can see, there's my receipt. You can see when I got that in 1993. I pulled this out of the Oklahoma Law Library, I believe. And this is State, this is State Department Document 7277. And I'll let you kind of read the introduction there if you want. But you can see right there. Anyways, this is one of the documents uh, that we have been living under for quite some time. So you can see over 50 years now. I mean, it's got a number of pages to it. It tells you right there, the United States program for a general and complete disarmament. And what a peaceful world. That probably means you and I aren't going to have guns. No speculation there, huh? And you can kind of see, there's, there's a, a number of pages, and it tells you exactly how they're going to do it. They tell us basically that we're only allowed to have 2.1 million people in our armed forces. Agreed military bases are going to be closed down. We've been seeing that for a while. So there's a number of pages there. That's the end of it. That's also going to be one of the documents that I have within my notebook that I'm going to make available for folks. Weather Treaty, UN Weapons Treaty. This is, again, off the UN's website. There's the number. You can see. You can see right there, it talks about weather and environmental modifications. So I will have that document within the notebook that you can show your friends and your neighbors. <clears throat> I'm also going to throw in another document for you, which again can be found on the UN's website. And you can see it right there, Hostile Use of Environmental Modification Techniques. Again, that one is based off the document that you just saw. And you can see the, the number up there and the year that it came out. Now what are we talking about as far as regulating treaty? You can see right there. I'm going to also talk about the banking institution and how the bankers actually run this country. A lot of people just don't seem to get the picture. Um, this was actually a Federal Reserve document that came out at one point in time. I no longer have the actual complete document, but it's called I Bet You Thought. You can probably look it up online and look at it. It kind of gets into the banking institutions and uh, tells you that they aren't part of the government. Alrighty, here's a receipt for a doc, another document that I have, or several documents, and you can see what it is. You can see it right there. One of the things I want to point out is what Ben Franklin said, talked about the Rothschilds being responsible for the Revolutionary War. Ben Franklin actually said that they were responsible for the Revolutionary War. See it right there. You can see the name Rothschild right there underlined again. Woodrow Wilson, one of his comments that he made 
about how we've come to be one of the most completely dominated uh, countries in the civilized world, in curl, controlled by a small group of dominant men. You've heard people talk about trading with the Enemy Act. I have it here for you. For those of you that don't believe it's real, you can see it right there and where it can be found. I'm going to get into how they trade. They took us off the gold standard. You can see that right there. So these are some of the documents that I'm going to cover. Also, we're going to talk about the right to keep and bear arms within this document. This, you can see, is a memorandum opinion for the Attorney General's office. And uh, you can kind of see what it talks about. Kind of give you an idea. You can see it's 106 pages long. Some of the things I'm going to cover and give you pages on it within this book um, are going to be whether the Second Amendment applies to the individual or to the militia and who the militia is. Is it a collective right or an individual? So we're going to cover that. We're going to talk about some of the rulings that they found. So I have several pages from this document within the notebook that I'm designing for folks. And basically, I'll leave it at this, is that uh, the conclusion that they've come up with is that it is an individual right, not a collective right. And then this is the end of that document and the people that did the research. So if you have any questions or you think there's something else we should add to this as far as government documents, let me know. This is just a short introduction video to the notebook that I'm designing for folks with the information in it. Again, thank you. And uh, this is Ron Cross. Have a wonderful day.